the next stage is to look at the task analysis. And the task analysis literally is quite important because this is where you're going to get most of your marks for criteria one and some into criteria two. So if we look back at the criteria, I'll just drag that onto the screen. It's saying here um, that you need to have a detailed analysis of relevant existing products and systems undertaken to relate to the design intentions. That means that our task analysis has to provide some sort of method of investigating and justifying and testing our product. Just above it, excellent understanding and analysis of the design context. So again, what we're looking at is breaking the problem down into smaller problems that we either know a lot about or we don't know so much about and then we can focus our research based on what we've got with the problem. Okay, so, example of that then is as follows. Um, you need to have a statement first of all explaining what the task analysis is. Everything that's in your folder, you've got to imagine the examiner won't have a chance to speak to you. So if you jump from one stage to another without any explanation, there's no way the examiner will be able to sit and quiz you and ask questions. So you should always be self-reflective and asking yourself, what am I doing this for? What's the purpose of it? What am I going to get out of it? And so that's what this statement is. So I've started by writing something similar to something that you might put down basically to describe why you've done the task analysis. So I've put there that I've decided to break the task down into smaller considerations to help guide my research and also to direct my time better when producing the concept solution. By ruling out at this stage what we need and what we don't need, it saves a lot of time later on doing things that we, we don't necessarily need to do. So it allows us to manu manage our time really better in industry, what we'll be looking at is obviously um, the cost of uh, research and development, which can spiral out of control if it's not controlled by the line manager. So, as an industry sort of sense, this is quite important to plan in the time scales and also things like launch dates. When does the product have to be completed by? For example, if I'm designing a product, uh, a Christmas product, then I need to get it on the market by, say, September, October, and if I miss that deadline, then the product isn't going to go to launch until the year after and that may be too late. So deadlines are important on this. Um, I've also put that after this stage you hope to eliminate areas that do not need to research and consider so we can start scratching things off that we don't need. And we also need to look at how we're going to present them onto the page. Now I've put here that they're not presented in any particular order of importance. They're just questions that come into my head. When you actually use the questions, or you generate your own questions, what you need to make sure you do is if you're using the ones that I'm about to show you as a basis, then you've got to start changing the order and sequence of them. Clearly if they're all the same, the examiner's going to know that this has been done from a template and you won't actually get the credit for designing um, or researching or breaking down your product. So that's something that you need to look at, either rewording them getting rid of some, or a bit better still, developing and adding your own, depending on what your situation is. Now I've done mine specifically to this sort of theme, which is to do with shop frontages and signage. However, some of them will relate to packaging. If you're considering packaging or you're looking at doing other things, point of sales, then things like mechanisms, how they're gonna to go together, pop-up books, all that sort of stuff. Those are considerations you'd expect to see at this stage. Okay, so what you would do there is knock that down into 12 and then copy and paste it onto the first page. So by the end of this session, really what should happen is your first step page should look very similar to this. So task analysis, and we'll just zoom in now. These are the questions that I think is probably going to be important at the moment for my designs. So the first thing I'm going to say about the designs, if I just zoom in a bit more. There we go. It's basically who's going to use the product. Now every question I put down here, I've got to justify why I've asked it and what I'm expecting to get from it. So for this one, who will use the product, what I need to do from here is I need to research the customers, the consumers, which type of person is going to use it. So therefore that would be my client profile or the consumer profile. The client, remember, may be different to the consumer. So that might be something you need to consider. I need to actually look at what is a corporate identity because this is something I'm going to actually create um, and also what things am I going to be 
what do I class or I define as a corporate identity, what am I going to put into my product? That sheet we'll look at a bit later on, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's basically going to be around a name, around a logo or a pictogram, around a slogan, and then of course the colour schemes and the fonts of which it will flow on from there. What materials will be used? Now we've already discussed this to some degree, in that we know that this is a graphics product, but when we say what materials will be used, although I'm designing a shop front, what I might need to consider is in reality, what am I going to use to make the actual signage? Is it going to be printed onto uh, vinyl printed, onto acrylic? Is it going to be made out of acrylic? Is it going to be illuminated? Where's the position um, of it going to be? Is it going to be something that's on the door, on the window? Lino printed on the window? All these sort of things are things that I can consider when I think of the materials. Is it going to be outside? If it's going to be outside, then obviously certain materials aren't very good. Um, things like ferric metals that will rust and that haven't been coated. All these sort of considerations is what we can start to discuss with this question. We need to actually define what a prototype is. Now, my definition of a prototype is literally it is a model. It's not a working model um, as such, um, but it's like a mock-up in a sense. It's it's a graphical illustration of a final sort of product and we can get it as close to reality as we can obviously shop front won't work, I'm not going to do it full scale but what I can do is do it to scale additional features um, this could be, are you going to have sound on, are you going to have lights on the shape of the actual building, are you going to change the frontage of it at this stage we don't know that but it's something to actually bear in mind and it's important to say that even though we've written the brief and the situation and even the task analysis if we need to come back at any point to changes we can because it's an e-folio um, and we can also say why we need to change it it could be the client's changed his mind, he's run out of money so he's had to reduce things these are the sort of things that happen in the industry quite often consumer pull, technology push you'll need to consider that, that's uh, another feature you can research that yourself basically is this shop something that is driven by the consumer market is it a need that they want and so the shop's being created because of that need or is it the other way around, technology push, we've got all this new technology and we need to launch it to the market and make the market aware and then generate the need from the product rather than generate a product from the need um, packaging, everything has packaging these days, we need to consider that even in the shop front, what are we going to package, are we talking the bags um, that we actually put things in, maybe the boxes or even the items itself, the product itself Production methods, mainly going to be, be graphics, going to be printing, but we can look at things like um, vacuum forming and things like that. When is it used? Well, it's going to be used 360, probably five days of the year if we're looking at websites. Um, it's going to be used quite a lot. It's going to be noticed quite a lot. It's going to be on display all the time because it's a signage. Where is it used? Well, it's going to be used on different medias. We know that from the brief. It's going to be used on bags, the shop front itself, the building, the shirts side of the vans, business cards, it needs to be used in as many places as we can to get these designs out. How is it used? This is pretty much it, where is it going to go? Is it going to go on the front of the shop? Um, are we going to look at um, whether it's up high, whether it's up low? There's all sorts of things that we need to, to look at there. Um, so when we look at it positions, we need to look at um, what information it's going to tell us, is it just going to be the name of the shop, is it going to be directions, so like street signs, things like that, are they going to be standalone, is it going to be a colour scheme, is it going to be flat against the wall, is it going to be sticking out, is it going to be hanging out, like um, one of the old signs that used to be, so when you look down inside the street you can still see where the shop is, pretty much everything really, so the surroundings is going to be lit up, the overall style, so we need to look at that a bit more uh, in depth as well. The production quality obviously is going to be quite high. Um, now this will be the difference between making a mock-up and a prototype really, um, whether it's being computer generated or by hand. So the quality of it, sketches will not naturally need to be done by hand, but when it comes to the final product we'd expect some IT and some more of the graphical skills to go into that. What theme is there? This depends pretty much on the shop. I know mine's a game theme, um, but if you're doing a film shop or anything like that, um, music shop then you might have a different theme out there if you're doing a car showroom there'll be a different theme as well so all this is something that we need to consider as well health and safety is important but that, that goes without saying that's uh, making the product as well as the actual product itself is it fit for purpose how long do you have to make it you've really got 40 hours from start to finish um, on your project 
this is well compared with the year, so it's not just a 40 hour block, in between we'll stop and do um, case studies or we'll do skills just to, to move things on. But literally it's 40 hours from start to finish you've got to design and make it. Primary and secondary functions are fairly straightforward and that depends on the shop but the main thing is with the corporate identity it's it's it is that it's a corporate identity to create a brand to create loyalty to create even trustworthiness amongst the public and to market the product how much will it cost we can leave that towards the end it pretty much depends on the scale and what you're producing of them so for example if it's going to be used on clothing is it going to be used on um, paper is it going to be used on the front of a shop? Are there going to be more than one shop? Is it going to be a network across the country? All these sort of things we can look at a bit later on. The life expectancy. Generally, you need something that's going to stand the test of time. You need a logo and a name. But in five years' time, ten years' time, will still be appropriate. Might need to change, uh, perhaps an updated from time to time. But if we say ten-year expectancy, then that's probably the, the most that we'd expect before we look at uh, regenerating or relaunching or rebranding the actual product. Target market, you need to look at what the target market needs, what do they want, who are the target market, what type of lifestyle do they have, what sort of money have they got, um, income, and you need to be quite stereotypical here and make sure that you hit all the areas. Most importantly the benchmarking, now, if you're doing things like products and things such as um, perfume bottles, it's quite easy to look at who your competitors are, who's the best selling sort of markets. Now we mind my competitors are going to be other game shops and other memorabilia shops. So I'll be looking at uh, things like game, uh, I'll be looking at WH Smith, I'll be looking at people that sell DVDs, all sorts of things like this. Uh, Forbidden Planet that sells toys, um, Toys R Us, the big boys, all these sort of things is what I'm actually looking at. And I need to create from there what actually have they got right, why is there their market and, and their designs standing up in the market and how am I going to compete against them what is their unique selling point the USB all these things is what I need to consider you also need to come put a plan of what you need to research and how you're going to research it primary research is the best so in other words with primary research that's things that you do yourself you can go and do visits you can speak to people you can take photos things that you've learned yourself how you've expressed them um, trying different materials, trying different methods, all that is primary research. Things like where you've gone on the internet and searched for things, or you found web pages, or you've got things second hand information, stuff you haven't got yourself, or you haven't generated yourself, um, and they're not original things, then they're secondary or even tertiary um, information, and you get more marks really for the primary research. Ergonomics and Anthropometrics we'll look at, but basically, if you're doing things like products, you need to make sure that humans can use them and that they are a good product and easy to use. If you're doing on the simple things like signage, you need to make sure it's clear, people can read them. Bear in mind we live in a multicultural society that may not speak English, so sometimes the logo may be more important than the actual wording or the, the language that the wording's in. Um, environmental considerations, as well as the things like using um, the products that can be recycled or from recycled products, if you're doing buildings and there's a lot of things to do with environmental consideration does it fit in with the other shops um, for a start if you're designing something fit to fit in an old um, so like Cambridge town or, or somewhere like Brood or something that's quite traditional the county council or the parish council might have set rules on what you can and can't do to the buildings and so environmental considerations can be quite massive really when you're designing shop fronts and setting up new businesses Social and cultural considerations, pretty much the same. Um, if you're doing things like a game shop, the obvious one for me is using characters, um, or I wouldn't have zombies coming out the window, and I wouldn't have um, things that people may find offensive, or young children might be struggling to use. And those are just an example of social or cultural considerations, um, things like that. So if, if I'm setting up a, a game shop next door to um, funeral directors, for example, having zombies coming out the window may not be the most appropriate um, or social, cohesive thing to do. So we need to look at things like that as well. And how are your ideas presented? This includes how you're going to present your portfolio, but it does mean you're saying well, I'm going to present it in a model of some description in 2D and in a 3D format. And that's pretty much your task analysis. 
Now the next uh, thing that you'll need to do, which the videos clips won't uh, basically talk about, is your task analysis answers. And so in my case, everything I've just explained, why I've answered the questions, I need to write in onto this page and also onto the following page. A few things before we uh, just finish the video clip. First of all, don't assume the examiner understands what you're thinking. You have to tell them, you have to annotate your sketches, and you have to be as concise but as specific as possible. It's like reading a book. You need to tell a story. You've got to justify the questions and why you think they're important to the final solution. If they're not important, they shouldn't be in there. If you can't tell the examiner or myself why it is you've included them into your design folder, then if you can't tell me why they're in there, they shouldn't be in there. Remember that the examiner can only award marks for understanding if you explain what it is you're trying to do at each stage, so you need to justify everything. In many ways, consider the examiner who's a complete idiot that hasn't got a clue, and then you have to explain even the simplest of things. And it does say on there that you'll need to write a statement that explains that these are not in any particular order, and that you'll research them um, in ways that are appropriate to you. So, for example, time might be an issue where you haven't researched some things as well as you might, or the availability to get somewhere. If you're doing a visit, you might not be able to do that visit at a certain time. You may have to wait. So all that you need to actually put in. And that really is um, the next section, which is the task analysis. If you need to go onto a second page um, or third page, that's fine. But the task analysis summary will literally sum up what it is you need to research and what you need. Uh, to do to get to your solution and that's before we do any of the sketches